Welcome to Virtual Office Hours, Reading Law School Outlines. This event is sponsored by the American Bar Association and JD Advising. The Virtual Office Hours series connects you with experts to help you thrive as a law student and prepare for life after law school. We're really excited to have Heather Buck with us today to talk about the process of writing law school outlines and to provide some real tangible tips and best practices. Rosie Marco is also here as well to answer any questions throughout the program. Heather Buck graduated cum laude in the top 10% of her class at Wayne State University Law School. She received numerous scholarships and awards at Wayne State, including the Patrick J. Bucket Award, which is given to the top first year law student in the legal research and writing course. She also served on the Wayne Law Review's executive board as the production editor. Heather has passed the Michigan Bar Exam and the California Bar Exam. After law school, Heather spent about three years clerking for various judges at the Third Judicial Circuit of Michigan. She also has experience in no-fault litigation and contract and employment law. Heather has been with JD Advising since 2018. She teaches JD Advising's Michigan Bar Exam, Uniform Bar Exam, and California Bar Exam courses. She also tutors students for the Bar Exam, all first-year law school classes, and for the MPRE. Heather, we'll turn things over to you. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. I couldn't get my camera to come on. Thank you guys for joining us today. And as Tracy said, today we're going to cover some tips and information about writing law school outlines. Um, also, as she mentioned, I graduated in the top 10% of my class. Our founder of JD Advising, Ashley Heideman, graduated number one in her class. So a lot of these things have been a collaborative effort from all of us at JD Advising that we've worked on, tailored, put together, and we'll share with you what worked for us, things that we've learned along the way, and hopefully you'll find these tips helpful, and there are things that you can start to implement to also graduate at the top of your class if that's something that you're aiming for. Um, throughout the webinar, I am going to be going over what I have in a PowerPoint. There is a handout that correlates to the PowerPoint. I believe Rosie will share a link where you can download the handout. You can find it in the chat box. If you do still want to download the handout to follow along, um, feel free to do so. If you don't have it in front of you, if you don't have a, an ability to download it right now, I'm going to go ahead and screen share this PowerPoint. So you will have the information that you need that you that, that I'm covering in front of you anyway, so don't worry if you don't have the handout in front of you. Uh, I will take questions if you think of any. Um, if you think of them during the webinar, feel free to send them in using the Q&A feature on Zoom, and I will save a little bit of time at the end to um, go into that Q&A and to pull those questions out and to cover your questions. So. Just be patient. If you do have a question, feel free to send it in, but just know that I'm going to get to them at the end um, and I will go through them and answer them. I might answer your question while I'm presenting. If you're, the answer might be in the information, um, but still go ahead and feel free to just send them in during the presentation so that you don't forget them if you want to. Um, okay, we're going to get started on the material and we're going to talk about today, as I said, how to make law school outlines. So first we have a poll. Um, you don't have to send this in. You don't have to put your answer in the chat or anything. Uh, just something to think about. When do, when do you think you should start outlining? Uh, at what point in the semester do you think would be a reasonable time to outline? Six weeks into the semester might sound like a good answer because you're thinking at that point, you're kind of getting a grasp on law school. Maybe you've kind of started to figure out what the heck is going on. It's not the best answer though. During study periods, some law schools give you like a week off between the end of classes and the beginning of final exams. That's a little late. I probably wouldn't wait that long to start my law school outlines when I feel like it. Sure, but are you ever really going to feel like it? Not the best option. Right now is the answer. This is the best time. If you have not already started making your outlines, I highly recommend starting now. And you might be thinking to yourself, and this is what I always hear from students, and I remember thinking this myself when I was in my first year of law school, I don't understand what's going on yet. How can I make an outline when I don't understand what's important? I don't understand what the takeaways are. I don't know what should be going into my outline. And that should not stop you from starting those outlines. 
because the process of outlining is where you try to start understanding these things. So by starting your outline, you're hopefully going to start understanding things. So don't feel like you have to have it all figured out before you start making your outline. You can figure it out as you go. And in fact, you might start your outline still not really understanding what the heck is going on in these classes. And what's nice about making your outlines early is if you start them early, you're going to have time hopefully throughout the semester to keep coming back to those outlines and to keep revising them. So if you start your outline right now, and then next week, you come back to what you outlined this week, maybe by next week, things start to make a little bit more sense, or even like next month. By next month, I'm sure things are going to make a lot more sense. So when you look back next month, at what you've already outlined, number one, you can fix it. You can rework it and say, oh, I, I see what I was supposed to be taking away now. Um, I'm going to clean this up. And then number two, the fact that you're looking back at it again means that you're reviewing that one more time. And it's more likely to stick with you through to the final exam. The more times you touch the outline, you rework it, you review it, the more likely that information is going to click for you. It's going to stick with you to the final exam. So I would absolutely start outlining as soon as possible, even if you don't feel internally ready yet, um, still go ahead and you can start outlining right away. So a few key strategies to getting started on outlining, because now you're probably thinking like, okay, I should be outlining, but what do I even do? Number one, outline early, just give you the reasons why. Number two, your class notes are your most important resource. Your professor is writing the exam. So the things that the professor says in class, the way that this professor explains the rules, that's what they're looking for in your exam. They're looking for you to explain it back to them the way that they explained it to you. So using your class notes, where hopefully you're writing down your professor's explanations, is going to be the most important resource for your outline. It is important that you make your own outline. I kind of mentioned this a couple minutes ago. It's the process of outlining that is really, really important for success in law school. It's not about having a finished outline. I think this is a very common misconception. People think that the goal is just to have an outline. A lot of times in law school, exams are open book, which means you can take your outline with you to the exam. And so students think, I don't even actually have to know this stuff. I don't have to have it memorized. I just need to have the outline because I'm going to take that outline to the exam and I can just look everything up. If you're looking everything up and you're trying to figure this stuff out while you're sitting in the exam, you might be able to pass the class. But if your goal is to do really well, that's probably not the best strategy. You want to walk into the exam with your outline kind of there for you as a crutch, just in case you need it. But the people who do really well on the exams never even need to open those outlines because they're so familiar with the stuff that's in it um, that it's it's already in their brain. They don't need to look that stuff up. They're not spending time during the exam trying to figure this out. They already know, and they spend time during the exam just writing an answer. So it is important that you go through the process of outlining to make sure that you understand this material and not just rely on someone else's outline or a commercial outline. There are benefits to those, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Number four, don't type up your class notes and call it an outline. I'll give you an example of what this kind of looks like as we, as I show you an example of outlining. Um, but the way you cover material in class is probably centered around the cases. The professor will say, okay, the first case we're going to talk about is Smith versus Jones. What happened in this case? What was the issue? What was the rule? What did the court hold? And the class is very centered on cases. And that's not a great way to structure your outline. And I'll show you what that what a better way to structure your outline is in just a couple of minutes. Finally, organize your outline in a way that makes sense to you. I think it's important if you haven't already to take a look at some um, practice final exams, practice law school exams. Some professors give like a midterm. Sometimes I see classes where the professor will give a midterm and it doesn't count. They just kind of want to expose you to what a law school exam could look like. Um, I think it's important that you at least look at some practice exams. You don't necessarily have to do them even, but understanding what a law school exam looks like will help you understand what types of information should be going into your outline. 
you should be writing your outline in a way that makes sense to you in a way that's going to be um, usable for the exam. So you should be focusing on the things that you need to know for the exam. And we'll talk more about that as I go through the sample. So how should I get started outlining? So number one, should you outline around the cases that you discussed in class? I just gave you the answer to this. That's a no. That is not the best way to outline. That's not going to be the most effective. Should you use a commercial outline rather than making your own? No, you can use the commercial outline. There are definitely reasons why you might want to access the commercial outline, but rather than making your own, not the best option. Um, you could use it to help you make your own, but you should still definitely make your own. No organization is necessary. You can just word vomit on a page and call it an outline. That's not gonna be helpful. Um, you're gonna have all this stuff there on the page, but are you gonna know it? Are you gonna understand it? Is it gonna be usable? Probably not. Instead, you should organize your outline around the topics that you discuss in class. Focus on the topics from class. So what do you get, how do you get started? What do you, like, what do I mean? What, how do you know what the topic is? There's two places you can find the topics that I think are the best starting point for making an outline. Number one is the table of contents from your book. This is what I use. I would open my case book to the table of contents. I would look at the name of the chapter. And I would look at the titles for each of the like the sub issues within that chapter. And that was the overall structure of my outline. So you can see the sample on the side here. This is a sample. We're going to kind of walk through how to write a sample contract outline. This might be your table of contents or a snippet from it from your contracts book. So the first chapter might be on contract formation. And there's a subsection on offer a subsection on acceptance, and a subsection on consideration. So I'm going to take that, and those are going to be the main sections of my outline. So I'm going to use that to form my outline. I'm going to um, focus on what is an offer, what is acceptance, what is consideration. The other, um, I skipped ahead too quickly here. The other source that you can use to find the topics, and as a, a beginning source for your outline, is your professor's syllabus. Some professors will write a syllabus with kind of like a, a outline structure of what you're gonna be covering in class, where they'll tell you like the next four class periods, we're gonna talk about contract formation. On Monday, we're gonna do offers. On Tuesday, we'll do acceptance. Next Monday, we'll do consideration. That's also a good starting place for your outline, especially because that's coming from your professor. So they're telling you what topics and what things they want you to be focusing on in class. Not all professors provide that level of detail in their syllabus, so that's why the table of contents um, works as well for the beginning of your outline. So when you're filling that in, so now that we have that bone, like bare bone structure of an outline, you're filling that in, start with the first issue. Don't start with the cases that you covered in class. So don't just skip right into the first case that you covered on offers. Figure out what is an offer? What is the rule statement for an offer? So an offer is a manifestation of intent to enter into a contract. And we can break that down. We know that an offer requires both intent and specific terms. Specific terms are price, quantity, and identity. Um, the intent is looked at from the perspective of a reasonable person. So this is basically like the definition of an offer. But if you look at that purple paragraph, it's dense. That's a lot to read. That's not something that I can quickly just look at and take away key things from that paragraph. So the next thing you wanna do is break that into manageable pieces. Take that rule statement, take that paragraph and break it up. So now this is the exact same information, just in a much more manageable format. An offer requires two things, intent and specific terms. You can see the note that intent is looked at from the perspective of a reasonable person. Specific terms are price, quantity, and identity of the offering. So once you figure out your topic, figure out the rule and the elements for that topic, and then break it down into manageable parts. The next thing you want to do is add cases. This is the proper way to add cases to your outline. As I keep saying, you don't want to structure your outline around the cases. Instead, use the cases to kind of supplement and explain the rules. The rules should be the focus of your outline. If you haven't yet looked at a practice um, final exam or a law school exam, they tend to be hypothetical situations. Like for instance, let's say your professor gives you this scenario where Bob says to Joe, 
Joe, I'll give you $10 if you wash my car on Saturday. And, and Joe says, sure, I'll do it. And then Joe never shows up on Saturday. So Bob sues, who wins? That might be a very generic, basic uh, example of, but that might be kind of what a law school exam looks like. It's a hypothetical situation. They don't ask typically, tell me what happened in the Fairmount Glassworks case. Who was the plaintiff? What did he argue? Whose side did the, did the court favor? Did they like the defendant's argument better or the plaintiff's argument better? Um, what was the legal issue presented in that case? Those aren't typically the types of questions that are asked on exams. So that's not really the type of information that you need to include in your outline, or more importantly, that you want to focus your outline around. When you have that hypothetical, Bob and Joe and the offer to wash the car, you're going to want to ask, is there a contract? Well, a contract requires offer acceptance and consideration. So first of all, was there an offer? Did he have intent? Do we have specific terms? If we look at his offer from a reasonable person standpoint, did he? does it look like he had intent? So using the... I, use the idea of you know how your professor is going to test this material as the basis for structuring your outline. You wanna set this up in a way that it's gonna be helpful for you. So the cases are probably gonna be used in like your analysis. So you're gonna say, um, Bob made an offer and in your analysis, you might say similar to the Fairmont Glassworks case or similar to Harvey versus Facey, Bob's offer was blah, blah, blah. And so you're gonna use very short snippets from these cases. So you don't need extensive notes on what happened in these cases um, in order to have a good outline. Your outline, again, should be centered around the, the topics, the rules, and then use the cases to illustrate. Another thing you wanna do after you have that information in your outline is add in hypos that your professor gives in class. So if the professor likes to cold call people and he likes to twist the facts. So if he says, well, what would have happened if, and then he changes the facts on you slightly, write those things down and include them in your outline because your professor is gonna give you a hypothetical situation on the final exam. And so all of these mini hypos during class, they're like mini exams. They're giving you a preview of what to expect on the professor's final exam. So if they give a similar situation on the exam, something that they've already covered in class where they kind of twisted the facts and you guys talked about what the outcome would be and how the rule would apply to those different facts. If you have that in your outline and that's something that you already understand walking into the exam, that's something that you can definitely use to answer that question on the exam to write about in your analysis. So this is another thing you wanna include is all those hypos that your professor gives during class. Um, also, make sure that you include things like exceptions, if there's like a minority majority approach, um, different twists on the rule, those I would throw in also because those are another place where you can pick up some extra points on the exam. So here you can see the exception is that most contracts require price as an essential term, but uh, contracts for the sale of goods do not. So in my example, I told you Bob and Joe um, are have they have this agreement that Joe's going to wash Bob's car for ten dollars. So you might say price is a, is an essential term of an offer, but it's not essential if it's a contract for the sale of goods. And then in your analysis, you could say, however, this is not a contract for the sale of goods. Therefore, this exception doesn't apply. So having those exceptions and being able to discuss them, it's going to get you some extra points on your exam. Finally, if you are a visual learner or if you are someone that likes to see things, adding things like pictures, diagrams, charts to your outline can also be very helpful. These can get kind of dull very quickly. That's just a ton of black text on a page. Um, at the very least, color coding your, your outline so that it breaks it up and makes it easier to see or adding pictures like this into your outline if this is something that you find helpful can be really, really beneficial. This is actually a snippet from our um, JD Advising's contracts outline. There's a longer sample of it at the end of the handout. So if you don't have the handout in front of you or if you didn't download it yet, there's actually a um, our entire first chapter of our contracts outline is in there for you guys to check out. This is something we have for our law school subscription service, which I'll tell you a tiny bit more about at the end of um, the program today. 
but we have outlines for all of our first year class, all the first year classes. Like I said, this is not something that I would specifically rely on. I wouldn't just say, oh, well, JD advising has an outline, so I don't need to make my own. But if you're under, if you're not maybe understanding, how do I break this down? What are the elements of an offer? How do I know what the different pieces are? A commercial outline is a great place to start to kind of get that bare bones structure and then fill in some of the details from your class and your class notes or the pictures. Um, all of our outlines have illustrations and pictures like this. So again, if that's something you can you find helpful, you can utilize that and put it into your own outline. This is an example of what an outline could look like if you centered it around the cases. This is that exact same information that we just looked at a couple slides ago. This is the outline that we just kind of put together. This is the same thing, same information, but this is centered around the cases rather than centered around the topics. This is so hard to look at. This gives me anxiety just trying to figure out what is even going on here. These are the cases that go along with the topic of offer, but this doesn't really tell me anything. I would have to read through all of this and then sit there and kind of digest it in order to figure out what do I need for an offer? So the as I mentioned at the beginning, the, the outline should not just be um, your notes from class. It should not just be the cases that you covered in class and your case briefs that you maybe prepared before class. The outline is the after class digestion of what you were supposed to be taking away um, and should not necessarily just look like your notes retyped into a fancier color, color formatted uh, document. So hopefully you can see from kind of looking at this snippet, this is not super helpful. So this is what you kind of want to avoid when you're making an outline. You want to try to digest this and pull this apart into some more manageable chunks and um, some more manageable concepts. So let's talk about a few tips for outlining. I already told you the importance of starting early. If you have not started outlining yet, start today, start this weekend. If you're busy today and you don't have time today, this weekend would be a great time to start outlining. Your class notes are your most important resource. Um, if you are looking for like other outlines, I always used another person or another outline to get started to kind of see the big picture and to see where things were going as I worked through my own. Commercial outlines are great. Another really great source is if there are upper level students at your school who will share outlines, especially if they have an outline from that class with that professor, that's another really great resource. So if you miss something in class, if maybe you didn't understand something and you wanna see how someone else explains it, so maybe that'll help you digest it a little bit better, that's a really great source um, for materials that you can use and pull together as you're making your own outline. Again, I still wouldn't resort to just using someone else's outline, even if you find someone who has an outline from this class with this professor, you can use that as kind of like a starting point though to make your own. So it is important that you make your own outline. It's that process of digesting the information. Um, and I briefly just want to mention here, you, you might be thinking to yourself, when do I have time to outline? I have 200 plus pages of reading every week. Um, I have all these, I have a legal research and writing assignment due. I have a million things going on. How am I supposed to start outlining now? And Think about law school in general. Think about where your grade is coming from. Your grade is coming from your final exam. Most likely your entire grade is based on that one exam. So all the reading you're doing for class, it's nice and you wanna be prepared for class. I'm not telling you don't do the reading, but I would not be spending three, four hours a night prepping for a one hour class the next day uh, because that's three, four hours that you could probably be spending working on something like your outline. Your professor is going to tell you the next day in class what you're supposed to be taking away from this reading. Unless you're on call, when in, if you if they do cold call you, that's why you do want to do the reading. I don't, I'm not telling you to ignore it altogether. But assuming you're not on call, you're going to sit there and get what you need to take away from this reading. So I would figure out some shortcuts to reading cases. Read them quickly. Um, read case briefs ahead of time, look at an old outline ahead of time to try to see what the takeaways are from the case. Rather than trying to slug through these really long cases and figure out what the heck is going on so that you can go through them more quickly.
quickly and then have some time to work on something like your outline. So starting outlining early and figuring out a way to work some time into your study schedule to be able to outline will be really helpful. Don't just type up your class notes and call it an outline. Um, if you do that, it's probably going to look like that case-based outline that I showed you, which does not look super helpful just from glancing at it. You would have to read all of that and digest it as you're reading it. And you want something that's already been digested and is basically sitting there for you to just very easily pull off the page and plug into your law school exam answer. And then finally, the length doesn't matter. I get asked all the time, how long does my outline need to be? I had outlines that were 20, 25 pages, and I had outlines that were 90 pages. Um, there is no right answer to this as far as how long your outline has to be. I also really like to study by taking my outline and then condensing it and making it into like an attack outline. So my full outline might be 50 pages and then my attack outline is 10 pages. And they're both valid outlines. They're both helpful. They both help me understand the information. So there's no one right answer to how long your outline needs to be, long enough that it makes you comfortable that you have what you need to tackle the exam. All right, so how do you actually need to learn your outlines? Should after you make the outline, are you done? Can you just walk into the exam with your outline? So no, you, you don't need to, you shouldn't be just walking away from your outline and um, walking into the exam with it. Um, you don't want to just learn them for closed book exams. Open book exams are important too nor do you just want to learn them for open book exams, you need to learn your outlines. This is another reason why you want to start early. I kind of touched on this before. The earlier you start your outlines, the more time you'll have to keep going back over them and to digest and to learn that information so that when it comes time for the exam, you're not sitting there just flipping through your outline looking for things to write about. You know what you're going to write and your outline is just kind of there as a security blanket almost. Um, you shouldn't be looking everything up in your outline. If you are, you're not spending enough time writing your answers to the exam. So you should learn, memorize as much as you can your outline. So going over it again and again. There's a number of ways you can learn your outline. Um, and you should try different things to learn and to review your, your outline. Some people just like to read it. Some people like to read it out loud. Some people like to try to quiz themselves. So you make your outline and then you quiz yourself. I told you I liked to rework my outline. So I would take it and then I would work it into a shorter outline. And then I'd take my shorter outline and work it into an even shorter outline. And then you can use that shorter outline to quiz yourself. So see if you can fill in some of those like missing details from memory once you have the shorter version of your outline. You should repeat this process over and over. So the earlier you start your outlines, the more time you'll have to be able to go back and review these outlines over and over. Make sure you're taking breaks though. This is a lot of work. Um, this is probably the hardest part of law school, I think, is digesting the information and putting together a good outline because it takes a lot of brain power. Um, this is really where the heavy lifting is. And so make sure you're giving yourself some breaks. You should not just be pulling all-nighters every night to get these outlines done. You should be doing this in a healthy way so that you stay sane through law school. Make sure you're reviewing your outline with the final exam in mind as well. I talked about before, like what a final exam could look like and how you should be structuring your outline in a way that's going to be helpful for the final. Think about um, the final, can keep thinking about the final exam as you review also you can start to do some practice final exams with your outline to make sure that your outline is in a format that is gonna help you with the exam. And then also so that you can tweak that outline to make sure that it does fit your needs for the exam. So make sure you're reviewing the outline with the final in mind. The goal is not just to have an outline. The goal is to have the information in a format that works for you to help you succeed on the final exam. So now you have your outline and then you have these case briefs, you have your textbook, you have your class notes. What do you do with all of it? If you made a good outline and you're confident that this information that you've digested is clearly presented in your outline, you don't need that other stuff anymore. Once you make the outline, you've got that one document. It's like a study guide. It's where everything you need for this class is located. So once you make the outline, you don't have to keep going back to your case notes, uh, case briefs or class notes or the textbook. It all should be there in the outline for you. 
um, so that that can be your main resource as you're prepping for the final exam. Should you prepare any differently for open book versus closed book exams? I would say no. Whether it's open book or a closed book, if it's closed book, certainly you have to have the information memorized because you can't take your notes with you. And as I already think I said a couple times now, if it's an open book exam, you should still have the information just ready to go. If you're spending the entire exam period looking things up, you're not gonna do as well as you could on the exam. So I would prepare for an open book exam exactly as I would prepare for a closed book exam. I briefly mentioned before that we have um, some services, like we have a law school study aids program, which includes things like those outlines that I showed you. There's a sample outline at the end of your handout. Um, it also includes things like uh, practice questions, so multiple choice practice questions, essay practice questions. There's lectures on the different subjects you're likely encountering uh, during your first year of law school. If you're looking for like an explanation of some of these topics in a different way. Um, we also have bar exam, MPRE resources. If you are an ABA member, we do offer discounts and resources to ABA members. You can find our contact information at the end of the handout. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about any of our products, services, or JD advising in general. On our website, I believe you can sign up for an appointment to speak with one of our account representatives. Um, so if you do want to sign up for, I believe it's a 15 minute time slot where you can speak with Rosie or Hannah or one of our other account representatives, please do so. And then I skip this um, page. We do have a few other webinars coming up. I, I am specifically giving one on final exams, which is November 10th. So I mentioned final exams a couple times here, but if you want more detail about how exactly to tackle final exams and how to excel on them, um, I will be back on November 10th for a webinar on that topic. And if you are prepping to take the bar exam for the first time, we do have a bar exam webinar coming up in March for first time bar exam takers. All right, it does look like there's a couple questions in the Q&A. Let me turn that off and then I will um, answer your questions. So if you think of others, please feel free to continue sending them in. Um, how do you get the correct rules from cases if a professor hides the ball? So that's, a, um, that's really one of the things that you can use things like commercial outlines, supplements, someone else's outline for is to see like what the takeaway is supposed to be from a case. Case briefs, I find are incredibly helpful to tell you what the rule is, what the takeaway is from the case. Um, there's a lot of different places you can find case briefs. I, a lot of times, just Google the name of the case. I do a Google search, I find the case, and I can often find a pretty good synopsis of a case and what I'm supposed to be taking away from the case. I find it really helpful to look at those before class um, so that you have an idea of where class is heading. Um, if you are struggling to read a case and to figure out what the takeaway is, look at something like a case brief before class. That way, what your professor is saying, if they're hiding the ball or if they're kind of making things difficult, you may be able to kind of read between the lines if you understand what you're supposed to be getting out of the case ahead of time. So commercial supplements, um, like the JD advising supplements, like I said, those are great resources to try to figure out those takeaways from the cases. Um, oops. Um, if a teacher says the facts are important to specific cases, should they be in the outlines? I would say yes. Um, if they specifically tell you, especially if they tell you that they want to see information from the cases in your answer in the final exams, then yes, I would include some additional facts. I still wouldn't structure your outline around the cases. What I would do is where I showed you that sample outline where I showed you like we use the, the cases almost as an example of the rule. I would just include a little bit more detail in that section. And I was a huge fan of color coding. So I would color code things. Like if I was including information about a case, I might put the facts in one color and then the takeaway from the case in another color, just so that I could quickly look at that case. And if all I needed was the takeaway, I could just focus on that color that I used for the takeaway and ignore the part that just included the facts. I didn't have to read the whole 
paragraph or whatever information I included about that case, having it color coded, let me hone in on exactly what I needed from that piece. But yes, if they do stress the importance of details from cases, then you could include that extra information in your outline. How do you take effective class notes? Um, for me, this was a little bit of trial and error. Um, I hand wrote my notes during my first semester, and then I decided to type my notes after that. And um, I actually did, I think, better my first semester, slightly better than I did when I was typing notes, because for me, handwriting my notes made me really focus, and it made me kind of digest the information and think about what I was supposed to be taking away before I wrote it down because I didn't have time to write everything down. Whereas when I typed notes, I'm a really fast typer. So I would just type everything. I typed everything anyone ever said in class. And then that meant I had to go home after class and digest that and pull out the important stuff. So um, I ended up typing my notes for the rest of law school. I just liked having everything there. I found that to be um, more effective and a little bit more comforting to me, but I would say, see what works for you. Um, if handwriting is easier because you stay more focused, you're off your computer, you're not tempted to go buy things off of Amazon during your class, um, handwrite your notes. If you would rather just try to get as much done as you can, and then you want to take a little bit more time after class trying to digest it, you can type your notes. What I would say though, is try to go back over your notes as close to class as you can. So if you have a break right after class, reread your notes and fill in any holes. Make sure those notes make sense to you because it's still gonna be fresh in your mind at that point. Even like later that evening, if you don't have a break and you have to go home and um, do this later in the evening, that's still a good time where you should be going back over those notes. Do it as soon as you can so that you're not like a month later going back to your notes and saying, I don't know what this meant. I guess I'll have to go ask my professor, hey, what did you say on Tuesday, um, August 27th? I wasn't sure what this word said. They're going to say, I have no idea what that, what that word was either. Um, so this might be a good way of trying to figure out what method works best for you if you go over your notes close after class and you see that you really got a lot more down when you typed or it made a lot more sense if you just hand wrote your notes. There's no one right answer to how to take good notes in class. How do you incorporate policy into your outline? That's something else. So I showed you how you can, um, how we added the cases and then we added the hypos and then we added the exceptions. I would just do one more bullet point and add something like policy. So if the, you cover something or your professor stresses something like policy, that's something else that you can work into that outline as um, like a sub issue underneath your topics, just put it in the appropriate place. If it doesn't necessarily fit neatly into a topic, like if you have policy for offer in general and it doesn't go with intent, it doesn't go with specific terms, you could always just put it at the end of that section or at the beginning of the section. And again, I was a huge fan of color coding. So that's another thing that I might color code. I might put all of my policies uh, or policy issues in a certain color so that I knew if I was looking for policy arguments, that color would jump out at me. Or if I wasn't looking for a policy argument, I could just skip over that and keep looking at the other uh, issues that are in the outline that have nothing to do with policy. But do it in a way that works for you. And if your if professor doesn't focus on policy or doesn't stress it, you may not need to include it. So that's another thing, just you could ask your professor um, what types of things are gonna be on the exam? Is this something that you need to know for the exam? And think about including things in the outline that are necessary for the exam. So if they stress policy and they mention that that's something you need to know, definitely something to include. I don't see any more at the moment. Does anyone else have any um, questions? Looks like you answered all the questions. Thank you very much for joining us today and a special thank you to Heather Buck and the entire team at JD Advising. Visit the ABA website you know, for more law school advice, career guidance, links to the upcoming programs that Heather mentioned. We'll also be sending everyone a replay of this program along with the handouts. Have a great day.